Are you all good? That's the way. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Oh, good on you. Absolute. Well, we're in the house of the Lord. Now, we only come here on Sundays to celebrate the Lord being in our life. So we've got to celebrate. We've got to say good morning and be happy and all that stuff. Welcome to those people that are new here today and all are visiting. Welcome to you and to our meeting and uh, we hope you enjoy our meeting this morning. And welcome to those that will be viewing the meeting this afternoon on YouTube. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to be sick to watch it on YouTube. I mean, people watch it of an afternoon anyway. I spoke to someone the other day who watches it and they're in Sydney. So, you know, I think Keith said that someone in California watches it. Well, you know, it's a fabulous thing. So we've got to be all on our best behaviour. <laughs> well, um, Kathy and Roy Norton, they were the people that were going to donate the flowers this morning. But Roy rang me earlier this morning and said, Kathy's not too good. Now, she's okay. She's just got a cold or, or whatever, but she thought she'd better not uh, attend today. So they asked me to get the church flowers and bring them down in lieu of their, uh, their flowers this morning. So thank you very much, Kath and, uh, and Roy. Now, we'd like to welcome a few people. We've got Don Gibson with us. Hello. Hello. How are you going, Don? Yeah. Welcome. And of course, down here, I notice we've got, we've got Trevor Griffin is here today. Welcome, Trevor. And of course, we've got Tanya. Welcome back, Tanya. Yeah, yeah. See, you weren't here last week, so who was up here, you know, doing his thing? Yeah, yeah. So. But at least his mother saw him anyway. <laughs> Good on you, Jimmy. Now... Some people try and sneak this past me, but they've got to be very, very quick. Whose birthday is it today? Ozzy. Ozzy's <laughs> birthday. Congratulations, Ozzy. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Now we have another big one. Keith and Ruth married 49 years. How good is that? Congratulations. That is really, really good. <laughs> now, we all know Maureen. Now, Maureen is... What am I saying? Maureen. 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 Maureen is doing well. She's still in hospital but she's doing well, so we can only but pray for her and, uh, and help that, uh, hope that she gets uh, better. And, of course, our prayers go out to all those that are listed in the, in the newsletter this, uh, this morning. They are certainly deserving of our prayers as well. And, of course, our prayers go to Roy Fixter. Roy's going in to have eye surgery this week, so we certainly want, uh, want the Lord to be with you, Roy, and, uh, and guide you through that, um, that surgery. Now, Women's Fellowship, Women's Fellowship are having their picnic this Tuesday, so it's forecast for a little bit of rain. So I think, I think the Women's Picnic is like Easter, it rains every year, so anyway. Um, so Women's Fellowship picnic is on Tuesday. If it's raining, come here and we'll have it here. So, um, so that's this Tuesday. We have morning tea this morning, so if you're feeling you'd like just to have a quick cup of tea and a bit of fellowship, certainly come out the back and, uh, and enjoy a cup of tea with, with, with us all. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Welcome all. Lovely to see you. Well, welcome to David. Can you read my mind, can you? I'd like to really and truly welcome David Rees. Now, I should have remembered that because when David walked in this morning, he was on his crutch, right? And I said, I know what that feels like when I had the nerve damage in my back. 
So I said, it's a bit of a club going on here, you know, crutches, bit of a club. So David, welcome. <laughs> it's good to see you here, my friend. It really is. And the Lord to you, Chris, for looking after him. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. <laughs> Can I get a seat for you? <laughs> okay. How long do you think your influence lasts? I was talking to Jeff earlier before the meeting, reminding him of when he was at Toowoomba some years back, and I was quizzing him on a on a. Uh, there's a. I better go back a bit. I got a phone call yesterday afternoon from the hospital. The uh, uh, one of the hospital staff rang me and uh, asked if I could come up and have a prayer with someone who wanted to see the Salvation Army. And uh, so, oh, it was an, an end-of-life conversation, they told me. So I'm going, oh, who could that be? I'm going around the congregation. And, uh, and I got up there, and there was a, 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 a lady who used to go to the Toowoomba Salvation Army 40 years ago, uh, you explain the timbrels, big core in those days. Captain Errol Woodbury was the officer at the time, and uh, Jeff was a very young boy in, in those days. Uh, um, and uh, his parents are stationed up there too. And so here, she, here, here is Margaret Mueller in hospital, now being put into palliative care, and she called out for the army, and she hasn't attended for 40 years. And uh, the influence of the Salvation Army in those days, uh, she called out. You don't know, do you? You don't know. So pray for Margaret. Pray for Margaret. She's been placed in the palliative care, and uh, we will, our pastoral care guys will drop in and, and see you. We, you never know, do you, when someone's put in the palliative care, how long that you do have to minister to them. But she said, I know the Lord, I've kept my faith, and I know where I'm going. Just like that. And isn't that great when uh, you can say that? And so we don't know all the things, that, all the ministry that you guys have done in the past. Previous officers did a good job last week, John and Jane. Thank you very much for your ministry. That was uh, a lovely meeting. Well done. So, uh, so our, uh, there's a ripple effect in things that we don't even can't even maybe remember that we've shared a testimony or we've shared God's love in people's hearts. So we'll be praying for Margaret this week and their family and the niece and I met the whole family as you do. So uh, uh, I wasn't going to say that but um, we're up to uh, morning is broken. Uh, morning is broken like the first morning. Blackbird is spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for the springing fresh from the word. So we're seeing the three verses straight through. Please be upstanding and we'll have the intro from the band.
seated. We're going to have a Bible reading from Psalm, Psalm 67, 1 to 7. I'd like to read the, the first stanza and you can read the second slide. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. And all together, may God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. We're going to sing a chorus now, or it's a chorus of a song, All That I Am and All That I Can Be. And if you could just give us a bit of an intro, that would be great. Father, we thank you that we can sing words like that today as we come to worship you. We want to give all that we are and all that we can be. We thank you for your Holy Spirit's continual indwelling in our lives and we pray that through that we might shine a light into the lives of others in our families, in our communities in the places where we work, and amongst our work friends and our workmates, and, uh, and in our uh, leisure times, Lord, we just pray that we will be your witnesses and uh, so that we can say, take every passion, take every skill, take all my dreams and bend them to your will. My all I give, Lord, for you I'll live, Lord, come what may. Amen. Shall we pray together the family prayer on the screen? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive them that sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen and amen. Well, today's a special day. It's finally arrived. And uh, if you've come and you haven't been for a while, today is the day, our altar service, where we've been saving up, we've been def um, denying ourselves of our puddings or whatever um, it is that we've been able to uh, set aside extra money for our self-denial appeal today. There are envelopes available if you haven't got one uh, that John can, has been handing out and uh, Sandra and, and this appeal goes for until June but uh, so there, next week if you're unprepared this week you can give in, uh, in any offering in the weeks to come. So I'm excited. I've been challenged and so has Ruth when I said how much we should suggest that we give. Um, and that's how it should be, isn't it? It's a denial. Um, and we're so blessed. We're, I was talking to someone during the week and I keep seeing that, was it a lady's name, Sarah? She went from a mud hut to a better mud hut. <laughs> like, uh, and she was wrapped uh, because of the programs of the Salvation Army uh, in Papua New Guinea. I was talking to Rhonda Brady from uh, Days for Girls, who organises the Days for Girls uh, activity on a Wednesday, every fourth Wednesday. And uh, with those feminine products, um, and it was noted on the screen that sometimes the kids can't go to school, some people can't go to work. And, uh, and we're linking Rhonda up with Papua New Guinea Territory so that maybe we can send things to them from our core or from Days for Girls to assist those uh, young ladies and ladies to take further part in, uh, in what they do in their life. So isn't that great? We've been able to link up there. So without any further ado, the young people have brought their money boxes and held by some of the older people. And uh, Melissa's going to come and join me and tell me what to do, as she does. She reminds me of our daughter Rachel, really. You know, like Rachel comes into our house and all of a sudden starts bossing us around in a loving way, just like Melissa does. So um, we're going to have an opportunity for the young people to give. We're going to have the children's order service video soon. And, and uh, we'll start with that, the clip. Want to see? Thank you. So before we have the video, I just wanted to say the young people have been um, really enjoying learning about the work of the Salvation Army um, in Kenya and Papua New Guinea. And if you haven't noticed, we've made some beautiful posters up the back and we'd love for you to have a look and see um, the, their beautiful handiwork. Uh, there was a little bit of help from me and Teach Leanne, but they did most of the work, um, which you will notice when you have a look. Uh, and when the young people have finished bringing their money boxes up, I just want to finish with a quick prayer on behalf of the young people, if that's okay. So we'll watch the video and then the kids will come up with their money boxes. Hey friends, this is the last week of our self-denial series and it has been so great to have you join us. It's been so interesting. And do you know that the self-denial appeal isn't just something we do in our own core, it is something people do in every Salvation Army core around the world. This is a big service in Kenya where they are also raising money for self-denial. They have flags and drums and thousands of people worshiping God and giving their gifts from the heart. Wow, it's so different, isn't it? But I love their music and their dancing. The cadets even wrote a song for self-denial in their language, Swahili. They are singing. People are asking what's happening today. They have seen a large congregation. They are celebrating and singing with joy. Our main goal is self-denial. We sing praise to God the Father. He has done wonders to us all. 
It has been amazing to see Salvation Army Corps and programs in Kenya and Papua New Guinea help people in need and share the love of Jesus. What was your favourite story? I love to see the street school, how they're opening the church hall to teach all those children who would otherwise not go to school. I can't even imagine not being able to do those things. Yeah, the school was great, wasn't it? I love the sustainable agriculture program in Kenya, how they're teaching people to farm naturally, even in a time of drought. People all around the world live so differently, but God loves each and every one of us. Seeing other people without the things we have makes me want to help others so much more. As our Bible verse says, it is not about how much you give, but your motivation behind it. It is more about your attitude and what you give from the amount that you have. That's exactly right. Everything good we have is from God and we should use it to serve Him. God loves it when we give a gift from the heart. So have you learned our verse from 2 Corinthians 8 verse 11 to 12? I think you should finish what you started. If you give according to what you have, you will prove you are as eager to give as you were to think about giving. It doesn't matter how much you have. What matters is how much you are willing to give from what you have. It was awesome spending time with you. It feels so good to know that we are helping others and that by all working together to give what we can, we can make such a huge difference in other people's lives. Let's continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in these countries we have seen and the Salvation Army all around the world. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless. guys look after me. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all of the wonderful things that we have here in Australia. Thank you that we can go to school and that our parents can teach us from home. Thank you that we've learned to read and write. Thank you, Lord, that we, uh, our parents can have jobs to pay for the things that we need. Thank you that we have our own bedrooms. And Lord, as we've given things up this um, in the last few weeks and we've worked to raise money and we've had other people um, share with us so that we can raise money, we just want to thank you, Lord, for everything that we have. And we pray that you'll use the money that we've gathered to continue your work in different countries and in helping people to get the things that they need so that they can um, also learn more about you and love you as well. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the young people a clap as they go to Kids Church.
Oh, that's good, wasn't it? Well done. And that's a good mural up the back there too. I can tell what uh, Melissa did. Uh, that's good. Thank you very much. And now, this will be your weekly offering and, uh, and the tune of Chickenden. 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 Okay. I'm loving, waiting to hear what it sounds like because it's not one I've played very much. Okay. Over to you. May God bless you as you give. you to bow your heads as we return thanks this morning. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Father God, we come humbly into your presence this morning, but with grateful hearts, and we pray that your Holy Spirit will just shine upon us, and as you have received these gifts this morning from your people, we pray that you will bless them, multiply them, and use them for your kingdom. And we thank you for all your provision to us each and our families and our friends and our neighbours. And please accept our thanks and our love and continue to be in our ministry today as we worship you, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
thank the band for their message and for John and for Ross for their solos. And did you hear the accompaniment of the bird song? It's, uh, you, can, you can hear it, can't you? They're in tune. That was a good thing. So um, we're going to sing a song now. Sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord. Give thanks to God for everything while the band take their seats in the congregation. Thank you. Seated. Well, we've all got different things to thank God for this week, don't we? Hey, Jimmy, you got anything to thank God for this week? It's nice to see you smiling at us. Oh, yeah, there you go. So say good day today and uh, you'll receive a wonderful big white smile. <laughs> That's cool. That's almost worth waiting for. Okay. Now, we're going to have our final adult self-denial appeal video. Uh, then I've got some comments to make and then we'll have our order service together. And thank you for choosing that tune um, that I really hadn't heard before, I don't think. And it got a few people in the band looking through their tune book to see if we've got it, but I don't think we have, have we? I don't think we have that tune in the tune book, do we? Oh, we do! Oh, David, it's been hiding. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Okay. Yes? Oh, that's a relief. Okay. So, now for the, the video, and thank you guys up the back for been helping us all these weeks to bring the world into our citadel. Thank you.
Well, it can only make you smile, can't it? How would you like to be in that congregation? And correct me if I'm wrong, they were cadets, weren't they? They were cadets. Did you see them all? Did anyone count them all? Goodness me. That's... Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I wonder if any of us will be alive when we've got that many in our sessions. Oh, let's believe. Let's, let's believe. Um, okay. Our song is sung up on the screen. Laying now our gifts before thee, we toward thine altar move. Lord, accept these simple tokens of our deep, unswerving love. None can estimate their measure. When within thy hands they lie, all that we sincerely offer, thou wilt use and multiply. Can I have a look at the next verse too, please? It's, uh, they're lovely words. Nought we hold, save by surrender. Nothing keep but that we give. Loving life too much, we lose it. Dead to self, we truly live. Jesus, grant us understanding. Gain is found through sacrifice. For thy gift of life eternal, thou didst pay love's greatest price. Back to the, the second verse, thanks. And uh, we'll sing this and uh, feel free to move forward and uh, place your gift from the heart on the altar today. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to invite Chris Rees to come and uh, pray dedicatory prayer over our offering. Thank you, Chris. I invite you to stand with me as we pray and dedicate this offering to God and his work in the Salvation Army globally. God, our gracious Heavenly Father, we come with our hearts full of joy, our hearts dancing, because you are the one who has put it deeply in our hearts to give and to give, to expect nothing in return except the great coming of your glorious kingdom. We are so thankful that week by week we've been able to see your work. Beautiful pictures of people serving you. 
where there is great need, where there are few resources. And we're able to contribute to that wonderful work, not only in Kenya West or in Papua New Guinea, but in many developing world countries where the Salvation Army is working, in parts of Europe, in places where there is war and suffering, in places where there is famine and death. How blessed are we, Father, to give gifts from our heart. You have told us to seek your kingdom first, to prefer others' needs to our own, to give cheerfully and to give willingly, knowing that whatever we give, small or great, you see right into our hearts and you know that we want that all the world would praise you. May all the peoples praise you, Lord. May all the nations praise you. May your work and your will be done in bringing transformation to lives and communities, in helping children and their families to rise out of poverty and need, to bring people into worshipping grace-filled communities of love, where the good news of salvation is preached with great faith and with great joy. So we are among them, Lord, and we bring our gifts. We're so glad to be able to affirm that we believe in the power of the gospel. We're so pleased to be able to align with your great salvation plan for the world. And we give these gifts, dedicated to a very special purpose. And around our country today, many people just like us in Salvation Army Corps and Centres will share this same sense of privilege and joy in giving gifts from the heart. Indeed, we join the whole Salvation Army world internationally. Even those whose work we have seen will themselves contribute to this great work. So thank you, Father, for our privilege. Thank you for the gifts we can give. Thank you that your love and your great power will multiply the benefit of these gifts in all kinds of work for your kingdom's sake. So, Lord, we present these things to you for your blessing, knowing that in the power of the, your spirit, this great international self-denial fund will bring blessing to others and will enrich the blessing in our hearts as we share in it. We pray all these things, remembering that it's your kingdom and your work, our hands, our willingness, our love that we place here with these gifts. May all the peoples praise you, Lord. May all the peoples praise you. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and for his love's sake. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Unexpected events. Now, a couple of Friday afternoons ago, I was asked to go and pick our grandson Oscar up from footy training over at Mitchelton. So I went over and I had to go um, early enough to be able to watch him because, you know, I've never been watched him play um, footy training before. Apparently that's different to going to watch them play a match. So I went over and I was trying to find a place that was in the shade but I could also watch him because you do get quizzed on the way home. Did you see that tackle, Ma? Yep. 
Um, did you see that try? Yep. And he had a special bib on with initials, F-R. And stupid me did not know what F-R stands for. Who knows what F-R stands for? No. Oh, guys. Don't you even know, Dave? Oh, it's first receiver. Who didn't know that? <laughs> ah. He was first... Re no, sorry. First responder. First responder. Because I reminded him about that when I asked him to go upstairs and clean his teeth the next morning. There was no first response there. Uh, but in football, he was first responder. Anyway, I found a spot, you know, those wooden tables and chairs, and I sat down and... I guy approached me with three boys and he was um, a Maori guy who was obviously a footy player, you know, the tats, the hair, the whole works. And he said, do you mind if we share this table? Well, I'm not about to say no to a football player like that, am I? I said, no, no, make yourselves at home. So he put down a couple of pizzas and some garlic bread and then this unexpected event they said grace. It was so beautiful. And there was a little boy, he was too, very little, and he sat there with his hands like that. And the dad talked them through the grace, and then the little boy said amen. It was, I don't know if I was expecting anything at all, really, but that was so beautiful to sit there with these boys while they said grace. And then his dad and I had a little conversation about grace that we learned as children and we taught our children and they taught their children so when we all get together it's the big Terracini family grace and it was lovely and um, and he even invited me to have some pizza it was six o'clock Friday night well I looked at the boys and they looked at me as though to say don't even think about it so uh, so I didn't have any pizza Anyway, that was just one of those lovely unexpected events that I really loved. Jesus had an unexpected event and um, it came not long before he was to face the ordeal of his upcoming crucifixion. And he had announced to his disciples that they were going to go to Jerusalem. And I love that phrase that comes from Luke chapter 9, 51. And it says, When the days drew near for him to be received up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Isn't that a great expression? He set his face to go to Jerusalem. He knew what was going to happen there. He knew what it was all about. But he was determined. And nothing would distract him from setting his face to go to Jerusalem. On the way, he goes to Bethany. And um, in Matthew, we read that he went to Bethany and he stayed at the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. I'll just read a few verses so that we get the context. So it's Matthew 26. When Jesus had finished teaching all these things, and all these things are amazing, in chapter 25, you should read them. In two days, as you know, it will be the Passover festival, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders met together, blah, blah, and made plans. Anyway, verse 6. Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon, a man who had suffered from a dreaded skin disease. While Jesus was eating, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar filled with an expensive perfume which she poured on his head. The disciples saw this and became angry. Why all this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold for a large amount and the money given to the poor. Jesus knew what they were saying, so he said to them, Why are you so bothered by this woman? It is a fine and beautiful thing that she has done. You will always have poor people with you but you won't always have me. What she did was to pour this perfume on my body to get me ready for my burial. Now I assure you that wherever this gospel is preached all over the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. So he's at Bethany and he goes to 
Mary and Martha's place in Bethany. And they'd obviously said, look, you know, any time you're in town, you can stay. And I've always wondered where the disciples say. So, like, did he rock up and say, well, you said any time? They say, come in. He goes, and I've got a few friends, you know, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, his brother John, Thaddeus. And then I ran out because it's a song. And I ran out of the... James, the son of Alphaeus. And Bartholomew. And there was Judas. He said, don't give him the ensuite, that's for sure. <laughs> and anyway, I don't know. I looked it up and I tried to find out where they stayed, but maybe they all did stay in the house. But he got invited to Simon's place for dinner. So there were three people that Jesus saw in Bethany that would have been a wonderful occasion for him. First, Mary, Martha and Lazarus. And we know that Lazarus was the man who died. And they said, Jesus, come quickly. Lazarus is very ill. And Jesus took his time, but he got there. And they said, well, it's too late. You should have come more quickly. Lazarus is dead. And he said, well, open the stone. And he prayed and Lazarus came alive again. So Lazarus was eternally grateful to Jesus, as were his sisters, that this miracle had happened. And he had him in his home so that he could express the hospitality and the generosity that he could show him because they were still rejoicing over the fact that one day Jesus brought Lazarus back to life. What a lovely thing to celebrate. What a great reason to go to Bethany and say, wasn't that a great day, Lazarus, when you came forth from the grave? And then there's Simon, and they call him Simon the leper. Now, clearly, if he still had leprosy, he would not be in a house inviting people in. He'd be outside the village with the bell saying, stay away. Clearly, Jesus had healed this man. He had leprosy, he was an outcast, he was sick, but Jesus had clearly healed him. And now Simon says, look, bring all your friends, bring everyone, we're going to have a great celebration. And so Jesus was welcomed in to the house of Simon, who wanted also to show a grateful heart for the fact that Jesus had healed him from this horrible disease. And then there's the woman, and she's described in the four Gospels. She doesn't get a name. But she came in, and we know the story. We just read it, and we're familiar with it. And she poured the expensive, sorry, <coughs> expensive ointment over Jesus. She anointed him with this beautiful smelling oil. And when I read that, she anointed him with oil, I immediately think of the psalmist in that very familiar Psalm 23 where David the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And even though I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me, you anoint my head with oil. You anoint my head with oil. Now, what was anointing the head with oil all about? I mean, in our culture now, if we went to someone's house and they poured oil over our head, as nice smelling as it would be, it really would not be appreciated. And then part of the thing was to rub it in. Could you imagine having oil rubbed into your hair? Like that would take weeks to get out, wouldn't it, with as much conditioner as possible. But it was a thing that people did to recognise a special guest, to elevate someone to the status of a special guest. And this woman, whom Jesus had clearly shown kindness to, this woman who maybe was not used to people loving her and accepting her and showing her kindness, Jesus did. Jesus loved her and she responded to that and she poured 
the oil over him to say, you are a special guest. And I want to recognise how special you are. And here's Jesus, knowing that while this is happening, the religious people of the day are already plotting to kill him. The, the crowds in a few days will praise him and then turn on him. Someone sitting right near him is going to go and sell him to the religious people. He knows all that's happening. But here, in the sacred place of Bethany, he is anointed with oil. And the going back to the psalmist, he says, I'm going to stay here forever. I'm going to dwell in this house forever because in the midst of my enemy's God, you prepare a feast for me. While all my enemies are out there watching, I can sit back and eat and drink because, God, you have provided that for me in the midst of my enemies. And God, in Jesus, in chapter 25, talks about when the Son of Man comes in all his glory with the angels, those who are righteous... Those who have lived a righteous life and given their life to Jesus will be with him forever. And we will be feasting in paradise with Jesus forever. We will be having the anointment of oil forever. And Jesus knows that within a short time, he will be paying the price so that can happen. So that we can have that experience of David that in the presence of my enemies, you will be with me, God, not only with me, but you will anoint me with your oil, you will lift me up, and you will provide for me in the presence of my enemies. In the next couple of weeks, we will follow the journey of Jesus as he faces death for us and consequently provides a place for us for eternity. Right now, in Bethany, we can see that Jesus has a feast prepared for him in the midst of his enemies and his head is anointed with oil. And as we think about that over the next couple of weeks, let us rejoice in that love of God for us personally that David described. Let us think of the ministry of that woman who anointed his head with oil. And let's think about what we do and what we say and how we think day in and day out, that our lives will honour Jesus in the same way as that woman who poured oil on his head. Amen. Thank you, Ruth, for those words. We spoke about a sacred place of Bethany. And this morning, we're here at a sacred place. And I wonder if it's time for a reconsecration time for anyone here this morning. I'm always challenged in a planning giving program, a generous life program, a time of self denial, where I'm challenged and we as a couple are challenged uh, to give as we've done today. And it's a spiritual exercise, isn't it? It's a it's not just a it's not just about giving money, it's about being obedient to the Lord and you might like to come out of that obedience that you've already discussed this week and just make a public declaration of your faith as we sing this lovely song we don't really need the words for O oh Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made come to the front kneel, stand, 
whatever is comfortable for you. Someone will speak with you if you wish. O oh Lord, my God. O oh Lord, my God. Consider all the words our hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. I power throughout the universe display. Let's be upstanding as we sing. Then sings my soul. My Saviour God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to Thee, how great Thou art. You are so great and awesome God. And Lord, I pray that as your Holy Spirit's been speaking to our hearts in these weeks of preparation to this great day, when we think of the thousands of dollars that have come and been placed on the altar today, which will be used in an overseas service, which will extend programs that help people to, uh, to become completely new, have different lifestyles. But more importantly than all, many will find faith in Jesus because of the programs that are being offered and, uh, in, in, and by dedicated people who will not only be showing how to people to grow vegetables but how they can find you in their lives and what a difference that has made and we've watched it with our own eyes. And so, Lord, we thank you that we can come. We can bring a self-denial gift this day. And, Lord, we just pray, as Chris has prayed, that it will be used wisely in, uh, throughout the world. We, we ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, please remain seated, as standing as we sing. 724. 724, and it's up on the screen. Make me a captive, Lord, and then I shall be free. Aren't they great words? Make me a captive, Lord, and then I shall be free. I love it. Let's sing it together. Make me a captive, Lord, and then I shall be free. Force me to so and I shall conquer me. I sing in life's alarms when I'm my soul. 
Let's all read together the benediction. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.